Welcome to our temporary <clears throat> studio. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. I'm just going to do a couple little switcheroos Alrighty. here. Sounds good. There we go. Go over to comments, catch up what everyone's talking about. Nice. Got All right. Welcome, hello. Madison. Can you guys just let us know if you can hear us okay? We've had some audio issues today. Oh, And really? I want to make sure. So um, if someone can write in comments, if you can hear us, that would be great. Be really nice I'm going to hear. wait until hmm? I see. Okay, Madison says There's okay. Go. Okay, good. Thank I'm going to assume Madison. we are good. It must be good. Happy Seward's Day. Today, Seward's Day. Yes. Uh, well, you have the information there more than I do. I, I'm not going to copy it. You're going to read it. Do you remember what year? I 1867. You got it right. Eight, the year was 1867. The on the block was the sale of Alaska from Russia. How much? Seven million dollars. Seven point two million dollars. There you go. Alaska was sold <laughs> on this day. A lot of people for called 7 it. Million. A lot of people called it the Seward's Folly because they thought this was a wasteland. Well, wasteland. What's up there in Who the north of Arctic? Who would want to visit Alaska? Oh my gosh! And now today, all of oh. you all want to visit Alaska. They're they want to see Alaska. Volume is very low. Oh, okay. Well, we can. Can you turn that up? That new thing up? No, but is that a consensus with everyone? Is the volume really low, or <coughs> Scott? Can you turn us up? Let's see. A little low for me, too. Oh, go figure. Hold well, on. I think in your DJI thing, you can probably turn it up somewhere. I don't know how to do that, because we're going to do this. <laughs> you want to explain why we're downstairs in our dining room? Yeah, I do. I there's Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to switch to a new microphone. Okay. Please tell me if this is better. So we're going through some technical issues right now. We're trying to try, trying to install new equipment, uh, hardware mm -hmm. and microphones and such, and uh, we haven't had much luck today. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Mom, uh, Scott, Rick, is the volume a little better now? I'm getting much better. Okay. Much better. Well, we okay. tried. We tried. Turn that Bought off. Brand new, well, uh, brand new microphones and. She's had them for two weeks, and today she decides to learn how to use them. Well, use I forgot about them. <laughs> You're the one that suggested that we try. Anyway, now that we have a, 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 a cluster of uh, people here. Um, yeah, why, why? I just want to get over this over real quick. Uh, we're downstairs out of our studio right now because I really can't climb stairs. I had knee surgery three weeks ago. I am recovering. I'm doing very well. I'm disappointed that I cannot walk, and I still cannot walk for three more weeks, but that's just the type of surgery I had. Um, <clears throat> Stacy doing her best to take care of me. Uh, sometimes it's not very good, but sometimes it's great. Oh, oh, I'd still love her. Madison said, stop screaming. <laughs> no, wow. Anyway, um, my, I'm, I'm doing good. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that, and we're going to get on with uh, our evening with you guys about traveling in Alaska, through Alaska, tonight's topic is Kenai Peninsula, but I do believe Stacy has some more homework or more uh, couple of things, fill in just things to, go to take over. a look at. I also apologize. Yeah. Gary got sick a week ago. Mm -hmm. He's finally, re well, kind of recovering, mm -hmm. and he passed me his cough. So uh -huh. <clears throat> we are going to try to get through this without coughing terribly too hard too much yeah so. but when i talk a lot i tend to cough so i apologize in advance uh one really exciting piece of news is on monday we actually mm -hmm. uh accepted our 10,000th member into our rv to alaska the original facebook group that's huge that's it huge. really is that's a really big number and I say that's huge. You go out there to a lot of the other groups, there may be way more than 10,000, but our group, every single person is vetted uh, to control the scammers and spammers. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, there's questions you must answer to get into right. the group. And if you don't answer those after 24 hours, your request is declined. Mm -hmm. So, for our team of moderators to go through and vet 10 
thousand members is huge. It's a huge challenge. So thank you. Huge, yeah. huge thank yeah. you to the moderators. Very exciting. I know Madison's online. I'm not sure if Hillary's on or not, but I know Madison's here. So thank you, Madison. And anybody else, any other moderators who watch this later on, really thank you. Yes, absolutely. It just means the world to me to have such a great crew. Mm -hmm. And that our family of RVing to Alaska is growing every day by leaps and bounds. Yes, it is. With that, I also want to just update everybody about our rally coming up in July. Our rally is July 21st through the 25th and will be held at the Tulsona Wilderness Campground again this year. We had it there last year. It worked really well. Mm -hmm. So we are going back this year. And I am just absolutely shocked, overjoyed, and in awe of right. all of you. Amazing. We sold out every single electric site in the campground in under an hour. In fact, our premium sites went in five minutes. That's amazing. <laughs> I just, that's just crazy that you guys want to camp with us that much so we That's still cool. have tons i shouldn't say tons right. but we still have camping available <laughs> there's the first <clears throat> we still have camping available in the overflow lot which is well, more of a it's, boondocking style i wouldn't call it overflow it's it's true it's rally, rally parking. parking sure so it's group parking there's no structure however we're going to kind of make structure we'll park you in a way that you're near your neighbors and you'll have a central uh, area in the middle where you all can hang out, play ball, kick ball, whatever. I'm talking about the little ones. I see big family is on oh, tonight. And so far, they're the only ones with kids. We've okay. got six kids coming. Uh, we have 51 RVs registered as of today. We had two registrations this morning come mm -hmm. through. So well, you also said there's some small RV spots available. Still. Yes. So the small RV sites are still non-electrical or dry sites, um, but they are on the water right. uh, with a waterfront view uh, with a fire ring individually. And then the group site shares one fire ring and, and the, it's not on the water. With the small RV sites, are they? Is it like thirty feet and smaller, or is it twenty-five know, feet? Twenty-five and feet and small. So a, a, a B van, easily perfect for a B mm -hmm. van up there mm -hmm. in the small RV spot with a view of the river running through your campsite. And Amazing. I will say the tickets that are left are the least expensive of the different tiers. Sure. So if you still want to join us, we still have availability. You get a lot. It's four days of camping. Uh, t-shirt dinner uh arrival activities. catered dinner yeah, yeah yeah so super excited about that yes it is uh other thing is we still have consulting available if you need some last minute advice or just have questions uh especially with gary being down and out we have the time I've available time. to work with you one on one so check out our website on that rvindoalaska.com slash consulting sure um RV decals, guys, we still have these available. It's not too late. This one looks blank, but this is a window sticker that you can put on the inside. If you have dark windows, tinted windows, though, I'd yeah. go with an exterior. This doesn't go through very well on a uh, tinted window. But for the window clings, if, if you're renting an RV or something like that, perfect that for is rentals. perfect for rentals. So these are $10, and I still can get them out. It usually takes about five business days to get anywhere in the lower 48. If uh, you want, you can also order, I believe I've turned it on, where you can pre-order and wait and pick it up here when you're driving through our area in Houston. Uh, we're going to have that available for pickup. Mm -hmm. As well as this year, brand new, we are doing Big deal. a mail service Yes, where you can have packages or mail delivered to us. We will hold it. And for a very small fee, uh, we will collect your mail and hold it until you're in our area and pick it up. We'll hold it in a secure locked location. Yes. Won't be an individual lock box for a key. You still have to come to us to get opened. I think I'm going to convert our shed over in the RV lot into a little, um, what do you call it? A postal cache. Sure. Well, there you go. Postal cache. So, hey, that might be the name for it. Too. Well, there, there's a business 
very close to that. I mean, that's what I've kind of called packaged cash. Okay. okay. There's a business in Anchorage with that same name, so I don't want to confuse oh, well, it with yeah, that. Because you can't do that. But I'm going to get more information on that on the website by the travel season, which to me is May 1st. Uh, so I've got a month yet to get that information up, but that's coming. Uh -huh. um, and last but not least, pay attention to the group page this summer because we are going to do monthly meetups, maybe even more than one a month, just depending on our own schedule, what yep. we've got going on. But our very first meetup is already planned, and that's going to be at Chicken Stock this Ooh, year. Ooh, the music festival. Now, you'll only get... Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll only get to go if you have tickets for chicken stock, which chicken stock is sold out and their weight, um, the wait list, the is... wait list is like hundreds of people long. Yeah. So if you don't have tickets now, unfortunately, your chances are pretty slim. But if you do have tickets and you are going, just know Thursday evening, the night before chicken stock begins, mm -hmm. we're going to hold a meetup at our RV. Yeah. So. And you should know if you're going to be there already because you need to pre-purchase pre -purchase your tickets and camping. So, uh, but that Thursday, right before chicken stock, uh, we're going to do a meetup at our RV. That so. sounds great. All right. Yes. Is that good? And we, you got all your homework done? All, your all my homework's done? done. All right. Guys, we're prepared tonight. Both got notes. Yes. And they're big enough so I can read them without my glasses. <laughs> all right. I'm going to just buzz through Ooh. here. Lots of just hellos, hellos and all that. Yeah. Seeing a lot of familiar names. Mm -hmm. So glad to see you all. All it's right. Good to be back with you if guys. If you have questions, drop them below and we will go back through and answer any once we get through our talking points. Sounds good. So let's start as if. <coughs> Boy, this is going to be rough. So we're leaving the, we talked about Anchorage and, and the surrounding area last time, and now we're heading down towards the Kenai Peninsula, and we're going to go into Whittier, and we're going to, sorry, just bald eagle. We're going to, we're going to first take that long, really cool drive through the tunnel. I wouldn't say it's long. It's only three miles long. How, how many people drive through a three-mile long tunnel with an RV? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so uh, it's it's the, the train tunnel that you drive through to get to Whittier. Um, it is three miles long. It's uh, lit up fairly well, uh, wide enough for a train to go through, so plenty of wide, plenty wide enough for your RVs to go through. Can can I stop you yeah. for a moment? And I'm sorry, we sh just so you realize what we're doing. We're gonna, like you said, we're we're coming from Anchorage. And we're going to work our way on the Kenai yeah. going in that direction. And before we even hit that train tunnel, let's talk about where they can stay and do outside. Well, I guess so. Or do you want to do that on the outside? Let's, of the I'll, I'll, after we leave Whittier. We'll okay. Yeah. After we leave. So we're, 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 we're taking tunnel into Whittier. Okay. I'll shut up. <laughs> There's a couple of camping options. You know, Whittier is not really very tourist friendly. It's just... It's a, it's, fishing, a, it's a fishing. It's a fishing town. Yeah. It's uh, also uh, it's where a, a lot of our commerce comes in right. off of the barges. Great town, a working town kind of thing. Um, the the Alaska Marine Highway system comes in and out of there uh, fairly frequently. So and it, the cruise ship. And the cruise ship, yeah. So it's not really set up for much tourism. There's two campgrounds. Two campgrounds. Did you mention that? No, there's two campgrounds. There's one, the city campground by the waterfall, and then the beach campground, and um, they're both pay at the pay at the campground. There's a there's an Iron Ranger kind of thing there. There's I believe it's all, it's not Iron Ranger anymore. They mm -hmm. have gone to apps. Oh, okay, that's right, gone to the apps. Mm -hmm. um, there are assigned sites for each campground. Um, just kind of be aware of the site number that, that you were pulling into. Uh, the campground, the, the, it, the beach again, campground, has really nice views. It's not assigned. It's, it's zone. Zone. Well. It's just right. like, you know, when you go there, to there, a, if, you, if you park in front of a post that says 19 and pay for 19. No, it's no. a zone. Oh, wow. It's kind of like when you go to a parking area oh, downtown you. and they assign that block. She pays for it more than I do. I just, I just park the rig. She goes to pay for it. So she should know. <laughs> <laughs> and we stayed there in August. And that's how I know because <laughs> right. it did that's change. Right. It is zone. So when you pull up, you're going to look in your vicinity of that parking lot, what your zone yeah. number is, and then fill that into the app. The beach campground's great because you got amazing views of the water, um, of the uh, the um, 
you bay there. You kind of do, but it's blocked it's by blocked high by shrubs. shrubs. But you got the beach side. You can go beach combing on the low tides and all this and that. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. The uh, waterfall campground we have not stayed in. No. Um, but I, I understand because it is up near the waterfall. There may be some bug issues and this and that. Buggy. Um, but people still love it because it's a beautiful. The waterfall's huge, so it's still a nice campground. Another con. I'm going to go back to the beach because that's where we always stay. They are, um, the port of Whittier is, well, actually not the port, but at the head of the bay, they are building a new cruise ship terminal. Uh -huh. So there can be a lot of construction noise at the beach campground. When we stayed in August, there was a lot of dirt trucks running all day and pretty late into the, night, late into the night until the, the tunnel closed. Yeah. Um, so you can expect that there's going to be more construction, construction. noises yeah. because I believe that cruise ship here is oh, due to open, open in summer this year, this summer or fall, something like that. So I don't know when, mm -hmm. but that, that is one thing that even though we say it's a beautiful, yep. it's still just a parking lot. It is. Um, but there could be construction noise. Yep. Um, so things to do, um, the Beggage Bog, Beggage Bogs Visitor Center. You yeah. might as well say that when we go out of the tunnel. Oh, that's right, because that's the other, the other way. Yep. Side. That's the only side. That's, uh, that's 26 Glacier Cruises. There you go. <laughs> there you go. How about that one? That's, that's out, of, out of Whittier. In Whittier. Uh, what's nice about the 26 Glacier Cruise is part of their tagline is they, or their motto, is they guarantee no seasickness. It's no. a pretty good size uh, dual hull uh, boat that cruises through the water. It's, like a, it's a hydrofoil boat, isn't it? It's a catamaran. I think it's a catamaran. It kind of goes up on the up planes up high out of the water a little bit. So it, I could see how it could be a fairly smooth ride. And I know they are building a second boat adding to this. Yes, they are. Year. Yep. And if you want a little smaller, more personalized cruise uh, tour, maybe the Lazy Otter Charters might be a better option for you. It's a smaller boat. They might be able to get you closer into the glaciers or wildlife viewing areas. Um, but 20, uh, Lazy Otter is a great charter as well. They also, uh, an activity we always see whenever we go time. out on our own boat mm -hmm. is the jet ski tours. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name of that company. We We've personally haven't. No, I've personally never spoken with them. Well, I, on the docks, I'm talking. On the docks. Yeah. <laughs> but we have heard from our past members how fun oh, the jet ski great tours time. are yep it's an all day activity and they take you all the way out to blackstone that's the closest tidewater glacier I it think. is a to I yes the closest Pretty tidewater cool. glacier yes and they go all the way out there spend like lunch time and then head back it's but it's a pretty long trip I mean, it, 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 is. it is a long trip but if, if you guys aren't used to jet skiing for an extended amount of time probably four plus hours Maybe you need to question whether you want to do that or not, but it's long. I know it's a long trip. That'd be fun. They set you up in oh, proper dry suits, dry suits and, and PFDs and all, of, all the stuff. But I, I would love to go mm -hmm. do that. Also in Whittier, there's a lot of great little hikes in the yeah. area. I know at the end of the road, there's a hike out there that you can hike out to one of the, um, oh, what do you call that? I can't remember the name of it. The, uh, not the sewer. But I think anyway, there, there's is there one, one of those out, batteries out there too. I think so. Um, An old military battery. Military site. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's the, the Portage, Portage Glacier, Glacier Pass mm -hmm. Trail. I will say something. Um, if you do that Portage Pass Trail and you're on the Whittier side of the pass, which you will be if you do that hike, uh, be very conscientious about parking. of parking. Uh, there are some residents that live on that road, and in the past, they have been blocked to the point they couldn't get out, and that could lead to very serious consequences if there's an emergency. In this case, one of the boat captains couldn't get out and make one of his charters. So let's just be cautious. If something says no parking, then don't park there. Right. Look around. Leave plenty of spaces around driveways and, 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 and sharp corners. Absolutely. And don't park like on a corner. Right. That's what the situation was. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up um, and just be aware of your mm -hmm. surroundings. 
And now again, with Whittier being a smaller little town um, and not real heavy on tourists, there's not very many dining options. The Lazy Otter. Uh, they have a little cafe, little cafe there with coffee and chocolate yep. and fudge. A little, good stuff, good good eats. And then the Swiftwater Cafe, I believe they have a whole bunch of they have uh, fish and chips, halibut and chips, and I yeah. think they have pizzas and something like that too. Just past the boat launch, uh, there's a little uh, strip, mall strip mall of yeah. businesses. Well, same with the, in the main yeah. part of the harbor. <clears throat> but if you go to the, at the very end, there's a seafarers um, monument. But really great little eateries. I think, like you said, the Swift Water yep. has uh, seafood, seafood, pizza, yep. ice cream. Mm -hmm. Really I mean, good ice cream. Can't yeah. go wrong. Yeah, ice cream was great. Um, and there's a bunch of little gift shops along that, along both sides of the marina. There, yeah. basically, is where they are. And I think a couple of the tour operators yep. have a couple shops. Enterprise rent a car. If you want to rent a car? They have a couple cars there. <laughs> Kind of crazy. Well, I think it, that's it's more for the, for the, for the cruise fish, guys. No, it's for the cruise ships. <coughs> All right. Anyway, so so now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave Whittier, right? Pros and cons, just so oh, you know. Yeah. There's not very much, if at all, any boondocking yeah. in Whittier. A couple people have said, like overlanders on I Overlander, they'll take that road out to the very last point and, park out there. and try to park out there, but it's pretty well posted private property mm -hmm. or no parking. Well, we went out there last year with Winston and it said there's no, no parking, no camping signs yeah, everywhere. That, that was two years ago. Shoot, that was two years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. But just so you know, uh, Whittier really isn't a place to boondock or try to boondock right. for free. Even if you're parked in the parking lot, you have to pay for right. parking. It's not cheap. It's about ten or twenty dollars a day, mm -hmm. um, and they will ticket you. So pay for your parking. Go to the two campgrounds yep. and enjoy. Now, if you yeah. don't want to stay in Whittier, <laughs> I was gonna say though before you get, before we get out, don't discount Whittier. It's beautiful. It is. It is amazing. You get into the little town in there, and the marina, the two different marinas, one main one, one anyway. Uh, it's just a beautiful location. Drive around at the end of the road. There's some berry picking during certain times of the year. Um, if fish are running up the stream, you have a chance to see them and some bears. Uh, it's beautiful. We're 20 minutes in. You talk a lot, too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> One other quick thing, just so you know, driving into Whittier, <coughs> there is a toll at the toll booth mm -hmm. to go through the tunnel, but there is no toll to leave Whittier. Uh, with the train um, tunnel, it is a one-way, I believe you can enter. On the half. Yeah, you either, you exit on the top of the, if you're in Whittier, <laughs> you exit out of Whittier at the top of the yes. hour, and you enter Whittier from the other side at the bottom mm -hmm. of the hour. So traffic rotates, so you may miss the tunnel, and you'll have to hang out for, for half an hour. An hour, no, an hour. An hour, yes. forty-five minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah, forty-five. You minutes. have fifteen minutes after tunnel opening to make the tunnel. Yeah, tunnel opens at twelve. It closes at twelve fifteen. <clears throat> yep. And then your next chance is one. one. It will close at one fifteen. Bingo. Or twelve Ish. thirty. To moving on. You get it. Okay. <laughs> so we're leaving Whittier. Yep. Another place that you can stay that uh, is, I think, just as beautiful is a uh, forest service campground or service. Forest service yeah. and it's willowa campground in fact i believe you can reserve online in advance at willowa and that is on the road uh going towards whittier well if you're, we're leaving if you're whittier leaving, just, so we're leaving whittier it's on the it'd be on the every leaving it's on the right, right left left it's on the left just as you come out of the tunnel, there's also Portage Lake. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful visitor center there that you can go yep. visit. That's the Baggage Boggs Visitor Center, mm -hmm. as well as an opportunity to do a glacier cruise on a lake. So if you want to go see a glacier but not go on the ocean because you're afraid of seasickness, this one might Portage be Glacier Cruise is a perfect opportunity for yep. you to get on a boat see a glacier up close mm -hmm. on the water and not get ill. Correct. Um, anything else on that road? Uh, there no? are a couple of boondocking spots on I Overlander um, on that road through the valley there um, along the rivers. Um, 
check it out. Check it out before you pull your rig in there. That's all I gotta say, some are big, some are small. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go back out to the Seward Highway and we are gonna hang a left yep. and officially enter the Kenai Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna see a big sign as you enter and then you're gonna go up a big pass and go up and over Turnigan Pass. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're going to find quite a few uh, Forest Service campgrounds along the stretch of the road. Some are big, some are small. Mm -hmm. Use the apps in advance to know what size uh, you might do use. Right. Uh, if you're really questioning, if you're a bigger rig, unhook, go in or take a hike, walk in. Some are very favorable for big rigs. Some are not, but I can say we've driven most we've driven of them. I know the two of them, uh, uh, the Bertha one and the other one on the other side. I don't remember their names, yeah. but we drove with the motorhome through, through the loop. We just knew they were too small for us. Well, I think there were parking yeah. spots we could have parked in each one of them, but we weren't. We were just investigating. We weren't staying. I'll be honest. We were trying to get away from the parents. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> as you continue up towards Middle Kenai, another great place for any size RV is Tenderfoot oh, Campground, yes. and that is on Summit Lake, mm -hmm. just before you get to the tur Turn Lake, where you would turn off and go towards Homer and Kenai, or go straight and go to Seward. Um, one other little side trip down is the little town of Hope. Uh, there is camping available down yep. there. Paid camping is at Porcupine Campground. State, that's a state campground. That is a state campground. Yep. And Sea View Campground, which is in a town. private, uh, right in town where the little cafe is. I have a hard time calling town. In community? In, it's a little it's a town. It's a little, it's a little town. town. Uh, there's also some boondocking available on the outskirts mm -hmm. and off of side roads. Right. Again, use your apps like Iowerlander. Really good, really good long trail roads that are up in that area that you can drive on with a off-road vehicle. I would say smaller truck camper yeah. or, or yeah. sprinter I was van. Thinking, yeah, I was thinking like a day trip in your, in your toad or something like that. Yeah. It's a great little trip. Um, things to do in Hope. There is a recreational gold mining area on the Resurrection Creek. Mm -hmm. So if gold panning is something that you want to do, this is a legal place. You can do it. We have panned gold there. We've seen flakes. Mm -hmm. I think we kept them. We've we got a couple of flakes. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, we were there in mid-August, mid and that is when the salmon the were running. The were running. And they were... Um, they were thick. They're they snagging. Snagging for Ooh. yeah, they were yeah, snagging. they were they snagging. snagging. And a little three-year-old with a Barbie pole, was <laughs> yeah, doing better than most adults. Pretty cute. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hope is also a very popular place for a lot of um, music scenes. Yes. So the, a lot of uh, local bands will go in there and play like folk music type mm -hmm. music. So. <clears throat> Every night somewhere. Very no, active, night. especially if you're like in the Sea View Cafe uh, RV park area. Um, definitely could be lively. Yes, it will be. Uh, right here. For places to eat, uh, we've personally ate at the Creek Bend Cafe. Mm -hmm. And I have been dying to go to the dirty skillet our timing just doesn't work they do, they don't open till three and right. we're usually trying to get to seward or something and we just we're we just, miss we're we're passing by about noon or so it's like eh. they're always closed yep. and i think they're closed on sundays or <clears throat> yeah closed on sundays but if you're there in the evenings check out the dirty skillet uh -huh. i follow them on social media and their food looks amazing Great. uh if the fish are in it'll be very busy just gonna say that all right, so we're gonna we're gonna continue down the road, and we're gonna go down to Seward, Seward before we come back up and head over on the Sterling Highway. Sounds like a plan. So, from Turn Lake, <coughs> it's about another forty-two miles or so down mm -hmm. to Seward, and of course, you've probably Seward gets a lot of chatter on the Facebook group, and oh, there's yeah. tons going on. There's lots of festivals uh, like 
the Mermaid Fest. Of course, there's Fourth, Fourth of July, July is huge. their biggest thing. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, couple things, places to stay. I have down there is a KOA on the Exit Glacier yep. Road. Uh, we've personally stayed at Stony Creek RV Resort, which is out of town about three miles. I think we've stayed that in two different ways, in our motorhome and in our boat. Yes. Yes. yes Interestingly. We have. <laughs> then there are uh, lots of City of Seward waterfront campgrounds. Mm -hmm. Something new since uh, COVID is you need to book in advance your stays. You can't do a first come first serve, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, there may, I think there's one campground where there is, you can come in without reservations, but I don't believe it's on the waterfront. Uh, but check out the City of Seward's website to find out all their different campgrounds. I will also note if you're there for fishing, you may want to check out the campgrounds out Nash Road. Right. Um, there's a couple of parking lot campgrounds out there. It really puts you close to where they're doing well, it, the snagging. It, it puts you close to your own fishing. You're, if you have your own gear and you want to go out and go snagging, mm -hmm. I put you close to that. If you're taking a charter or something like that, then you want then to be, you want on to be the in, other in side. town. You want to be in town uh, with everything mm -hmm. else. But we know so many people, they're there to fish and yep. they want to do it on their, do it on, on their own. And on that's a great place to park and stay. Yep. And you don't, you're right there. Yeah. At the action. Yep. Yep. <coughs> um, and, and again, fishing is basically all summer, different species run through different areas uh, all summer long. And you will find there are higher times than others um and that's basically because the different species that are coming through maybe not as popular as the others yeah. things to do when you're in seward so uh of course <coughs> one of our favorite cruises is the kenai yes. fjords cruises uh, we actually have a special with them all of our members get 10 percent off oh, any nice. of their tours nice. uh, if you look in the featured section of our uh, facebook group or on our RVing to alaska website under the discounts tab you'll see the link to get that 10 percent discount on any tour they offer cool there's also Exit Glacier mm -hmm. that you can go visit. Several different hiking opportunities from there. Mm -hmm. And that's actually inside Kenai Fjords National Park. So if you have a National Park Pass, here's your opportunity to get your yeah. stand. Or if you uh, are a junior ranger and there you need go. to do that. There's also a visitor center right downtown in Seward mm -hmm. at the harbor. So that's another place that you can go and get your visitor stamp or your passport stamp. Mm -hmm. There's lots of walking around town, uh, especially down towards the Sea Life Center. Definitely recommend stopping there. It's about $30 per person, but it goes towards a really worthy yep. cause. Our Alaska Sea Life Center is a rehabilitation hospital. Rescue and rehab, yeah. For uh, rescued, uh, mostly sea lions. Uh, we've had a walrus. A walrus. Uh, uh, it's been a bit, of every, a bit of everything has gone through. A little bit, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty neat area. And they have. Oh, some... they have a really nice aquarium, or not aquarium, but a, a aquarium. I guess it's an aquarium. Yeah, mm -hmm. where you can walk through and see quite a few different uh, avian sea creatures, like birds. And well, such. yeah, they have a aviary. Aviary, yes. That where was you important. can walk in and see the puffins. Yep. And... Yep. It's it's pretty. It's really. It's neat. small, but I think it's done worth very well. We still go every time we go to Seward. I like to support them. Yep. But in that in that old town area down near Sea Life Center is a variety of restaurants and bars, um, some great, some not amazing. Um, but there's a good selection of food you can choose from. These are my recommendations. Uh, the cookery, oh, which yeah. That's that by far I think is my favorite eatery in Seward. Uh, we've given this one a couple shots, and it hasn't been the best, but We'll never. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Uh, the Flamingo Lounge. It's quite eclectic. It, it, it has the atmosphere is definitely interesting. It's something from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah, there's there's some interesting stuff to look at in there on the walls and, and such. It's changed over the years. So let's yep. just put it that yep. way. Um, 
Also, we've had really great meals at Apollo, Apollo. Oh, yeah. which is Greek and Italian, mm -hmm. uh, and the Highlander. Highlander really so good. that's all in Old Town. Yep. And then down by the waterfront, uh, Red's Burgers Food Truck is always great, mm -hmm. and Ray's Waterfront. Ray's is really nice. Fine dining yeah. on the, over, over the marina. So the Cookery yeah. and Ray's, they are going to be more top dollar. Yep. Uh, the other ones are more... A Highlander's up there a little bit, too. A little bit. Yeah. I think... Everywhere the food costs, a little bit more. especially in Seward, well, yeah. in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. I, I like Seward a lot. Seward's a fun town. There's a lot to do. I mean, they're walking down the old town, old town area, walking through the marina. You can actually get down and walk on the docks. They're not locked, so you can walk on the docks. Um, just got to respect the, the working captains and such yeah. and the working boats down there. We've met uh, some interesting uh, sailors down walking yeah, the docks. Yeah. Uh, when the when the charters come in, the fishing charters come in, you'll have an opportunity to see them flaying all the fish um, up on the fillet tables up there. So it's Linda's cool. asking what the name of the food truck is, and uh, that is Ray's uh, Red's Burgers. Well, Red's Burgers. Is there another one? <coughs> There's another one, but it. it... You me. I'm so sorry that we're hacking our way through we're, this. We're trying to get through this guys. Um, I don't remember the name, and it wasn't on Google. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a couple others around. And AKRV or says they agree the flamingo has gone downhill. So you're not the only one. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh pros and cons to Seward. It can be very busy on weekends. Holidays. Holidays. The nice thing though is if you do camp on the waterfront, your RV dump is uh part of that camping fee. Nice. Which is good because I feel the parking on the waterfront has gotten very expensive. It's yeah. around forty dollars a night and you're packed in there. So it's beautiful though. But so you, the sewered waterfront. You're paying busy. for the you're paying for the serene. Minutes, the serenity of it is a I maybe mean, it's not serene, but the, you're paying for the ambiance and the views. And it's yeah. beautiful. We've been parked there and we've seen humpback whales in the bay yeah, just absolutely. a couple hundred yards mm -hmm. out from the campground. So that's pretty special. And we've parked there during the fires and couldn't see the water's edge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Anyway. So now we're going to head up Middle uh, Peninsula. And this is the Cooper Landing okay. and um, Moose Pass area. So as you're headed back up to Turn Lake, where you would turn and start the Seward Highway, mm -hmm. you're going to go through a little community called Moose Pass. Uh, you, don't blink. Uh, it's not very large. It's not very large, but you'll know you're going through it because the road is going to have you slow down to, I think, 25, 25 town. miles per hour. Mm -hmm. There is a great boondocking site right on one of the curves as you're leaving town, as you're right leaving. on yep. the lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. the direction mm -hmm. you're going. Uh, again, check your apps like iOverlander to find right. where that is. I have noticed by watching videos from last summer from other it's gotten travelers, very popular. It is very busy at that one particular spot, yeah. but it is it's like a neat from spot. camping. It's a neat spot. It's free camping. Yep. It's gorgeous. I know in Moose Pass there's a couple little eateries. There's one cafe that seems like it's pretty busy all the time when we go through. Mm -hmm. We haven't stopped there, but um you stop to grind your axe. Well that's a different situation the different <laughs> spot is is they have a water a, a water, water wheel. wheel uh grinder uh, powered by a little creek that flows down the mountain and uh they have a stone grinder on there that you can grind an axe on if you need to so we did it so we did it. Yeah. it last time we rolled through there though it wasn't it wasn't moving. it wasn't moving but it was much. late in the season yeah, so it would have been off. turned off anyway okay so moving. we're gonna go up to churn lake now and we are gonna hang a left and now we're officially on the Sterling Highway. And this is going to take us Heading all the way down the, uh, in Homer. to Homer. Yeah. And uh, again, we're going to, first little community is Cooper Landing. And this is fish. This is fish haven. haven. Fish heaven. Fish, fish, fish. All they do is fish. And I will let you know, it is crazy with vehicles, crazy with people. Um, just watch your speeds as you go through here. The corners get tight. Uh, the road is very skinny. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just, we've had a, almost a couple of mishaps going through this section just because cars in front of you don't realize that they're supposed to turn right to get to their lodge and, and they slam on their brakes. Quicker than the motor home a drop. So just be careful when you're going through this area. It's extremely busy. Yep. Um, 
so there's campgrounds all along this uh mountainous drive that you're going through mm -hmm. and you're going to be going along the russian and kenai yeah, rivers and in here uh there's several campgrounds that you can check out for parking russian river campground cooper creek campground kenai river mm -hmm. campground quartz creek camp, camp campground right. just to name a few these are all four service campgrounds and then there is an rv park uh the <coughs> kenai princess lodge rv park I don't believe they're open yet for the season, so it's hard to get very much information from them, but you can park right. there with them. And there's tons of lodges that offer that offer parking for tours and stuff like that. Um, and, and there may be some RV parking with those lodges too. So there's, there's parking everywhere, camping almost everywhere. Just know this is fishing, like we right. said, fishing haven mm -hmm. um, and rafting there's quite a few rafting tours right. out of this either they're fishing from a raft or they're doing a whitewater raft uh tour eateries um we personally only eaten at one in this whole area highly recommend though two brothers oh, that, yeah it was a good time we had the nachos the nachos we had it was, was a, a um brisket nachos Brits, yeah brisket nachos was really good but the two brothers nice roadhouse mm -hmm. as well as uh there's Gwyn's. Gwyn's. Yep. So um, there's other eateries too. We're just mentioning ones that we have experience sure. with or know mm -hmm. that a lot of people have ate at. Yep. Um, Madison said the Russian River Campground is currently closed due to road reconstruction, That's but right. I believe right. it's opening. Is it opening this year? Mid season. Okay. So I know they're really reworking the the road to Seward. Well, no, that would that's not where they'd be working. I believe this yeah. is Sue, who is AK River. She says open June first and make reservations at Russian River. Yes, definitely make reservations in those areas. Uh, Her oh, Herb's back. Oh. Uh, Herb says I'm the campground host at Bing's Landing this summer. Stop in and oh, say nice. hi. Very good. A and a current fishing report. Oh, very good, Herb. Thank uh, you. And he can help tutor if you need help fishing the Kenai. He was with us last summer at yes. the uh, rally. Yes. We need to I get more maple, maple syrup. Maple syrup. Herb. I, it, it, that's been gone for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, the honey mustard. Is that what it is? Honey mustard? or I don't know. No, but the vanilla like, bean, I think we're on the very last I've, of it. I've poured some of our other syrup into there just to get the vanilla taste into it. Mm. Sorry, Herb. I've cheated. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh okay so time uh, check 5 43 so we're gonna move on down to the kenai peninsula wildlife refuge this is the next area that you're going to be driving uh -huh. through as you make your way over towards sterling and sadatna uh the kenai uh wildlife refuge offers the most boondocking you're going to yeah. find anywhere, anywhere on the Kenai mm -hmm. Peninsula. Mm -hmm. They also have really nice walking trails and a very nice uh, visitor center. Um, <coughs> I asked Hillary, our uh, moderator, to give me some notes because this is where she lives. She's our expert. She says there's nice walking, running, and biking trails at the, oh lordy, Saltishi trails and if i said that wrong i'm so wrong i'm so sorry where'd you write that it's right there oh oh yeah the tall tall feet saltishi trails yep. there are some great hiking trails along the skilak loop skilak. skilak lake loop road and the skilak lake campground for folks wanting mm -hmm. to boondock 26 sites you can also hike around and near testamina lake as well as boondock at the campground yep and Herb says he is, he's bringing more syrup. Good. Woo! Good color. All right. Um, so wildlife refuge. Yeah. Um, it's take a, advantage of the boondocking options available. Great hiking. Great. And there's some biking in there, too. It sounds like great I birding. Know. If birding, you're a birder, huge. that's a great place to go. Uh, there's also a huge fire that broke through there in 2017. No, 19. Swan Lake 19, fire. Yeah, 19. So there's a lot of burn scar in that area, um, which actually opens up to some bigger views. So I mean, that's a bonus for burn, I guess, is you can see the views. Yep. So 
Moving on. Moving on to the Sterling Sadatna Kenai area. Mm -hmm. um, we have only stayed at one place. There's tons of campgrounds. Again, the main goal here is fishing. So you're going to find a lot of fish camps. We stayed mm -hmm. at the Edgewater RV Park right at um, the bridge the, and the river. The bridge. You can stay there and they actually have their own platform where you can go down and fish directly from their shoreline. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a smaller park, but I thought they were wonderful. Were good we people. stayed a couple nights, couple nights there. A couple of times. Uh, things to do while you're in the Kenai, Sadatna, Sterling area. So this is a large metropolitan area. It's the, the largest, largest of area the for the Kenai. Uh, so this is where Walmart, yep. Fred, Fred Meyer, Meyer, all your major grocery stores. auto part stores, yep. lots of restaurants. So things to do. Hillary recommends Saturday Farmer's Market in both Kenai and Soldotna. Nice. And the Wednesday River Park Music Beer Craft Days. Well, oh, when, okay. Let's just go down there every Wednesday. Go on Wednesday. Sounds good. Of course, starting in mid-July, fishing on the Kenai mm -hmm. or the Kasila River a little bit further is south. a big thing to do. Also, going to the mouth of the Kenai to watch the dip netting is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's a fun now, watch. Dip netting, so you know, is only something that residents can do. But still, if you have an opportunity, go down and watch the process. It's it's pretty it's cool. It's crazy. Uh, walking along the beach of the Cook Inlet to see the mountain range is always pretty. Mm -hmm. And you can shore fish as well. For eateries, uh, Hillary recommends the Kenai River Brewing Company. The St. Elias I Brewing. St. Elias is where we went. That's where we yes. had really great had good, pizza. Good food there. Senior Poncho. Really good beer there, too. Okay. Yeah. And you can't get it anywhere. And you can't, they don't distribute yet. No. Senior Ponchos for Mexican, mm -hmm. Buckets, The Duck Inn, Audie's Deli, Ginger's for Breakfast, Siam Noodles, Addy Camp for Fancy Dinners, Ooh. and Echo Lake Meats for Takeaway special, Specials, especially. The brisket on Thursday. That doesn't sound like a bad deal. Um, we oh, haven't... someone else just said right here, Echo Lake Meats in Soldotna. Excellent nice. place to pick up meat. We have not spent much time on the Kenai ourselves, so we don't we, we don't know all this yet, so we're using our uh, our outreach to help us out. We've always gone Seward Ooh. and Nanelchek. Those are our main places. Yes. So speaking of that, um, we're going to head back further down the road and in between oh, yeah. uh, Soldotna and Homer is the little town of Nanelchik. Mm -hmm. This is also where the Kenai Peninsula State Fairgrounds is, where you might go to Salmon, Salmon Fest. Fest in August. Mm -hmm. But Nanelchik, we love, absolutely love, the Deep Creek State Recreation Area. It's a really cool area. If you guys want to find some great campgrounds, Look on Google and just put Alaska State Recreation Area and you'll get tons of these little campgrounds yep. pop up. And with Deep Creek, it's right on the Cook Inlet. Literally, I mean, you you can throw you can, a stone into the ocean. Almost. On well, high tide, I guess, well, if you've got, you got a good arm, you can hit the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and the view of the volcanoes across the you way. You can see the magic tree. Almost every day, every clear day. And can you remember their names? Iliamna, Readout, and S. What's S? I don't remember. IRS. I don't. Yeah, it's IRS. <laughs> and then Augustine. Uh, Augustine is down, an island. Down the you way. See, a really steep shaped cone island volcano. Okay, my Alaska expert. Someone <laughs> put the S volcano down for us. We got. Iliamna and Readout. What's the S? I forgot what it's Can't called. Remember anyway, this. anyways, beautiful mountainous views from across Deep the Creek. Uh, Iliamna is directly across the way, yeah. and it's, we were there one day and we saw it venting. It was really so, neat. Pretty cool. Uh, low tides. This place, the Cook Inlet, has historic low tides or uh, uh, tidal swings. So tidal be swings. Be aware of that. But the the walking on the low tidal spots is pretty amazing. There's not really many tide pools with creatures in them, in them and all that. But it's just walking out there on, on the flats. It's kind of cool. Also staying at Deep Creek, you can watch them trailer launch the fishing fleet oh, for the day. tracker launch. Uh, tracker launch. Yep. So you'll, like, if you go on one of those charters out of the Nilchik, 
you'll board your boat on land and then they were, will tractor you out and launch you out into the bay. And yep. then same thing when you come back, yep. they were, they'll power on to the trailer at the same time as the trailer is coming out of the water. That's how fast the tide is out there. It's, the tidal swing so large, it's you, can't, crazy. you can't put in a regular boat system, no, 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 or docks. Nope. It just doesn't work. Um, they also do that in, the, in Anchor Point. Yes. As well, yes. which is another yes. nice little campground area. Tons of campgrounds at Anchor Point. So Hillary also said there's lots of opportunity <coughs> for fishing boat Ooh. charters all along the Kenai and Kasila for yes. rainbow trout, steelhead, and Arctic char Dolly Varden if you're not here during salmon season. Mm -hmm. So if you want to... Uh, Freshwater fish charters. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have opportunities. Yep. She also says you can kayak a canoe at Kenai Lake, Tutsamina Lake, and Long Lake, to name a few of more popular ones. Oh, yeah. Also, we found a really great Thai restaurant in the Nelchek called Kinao Thai. I know we've spoken about them in the past, but mm -hmm. they're worth it. It's a nice little stop, um, family run restaurant. Just up the hill from, from Kenai or the Nilchik town uh, is a little, is a beautiful Orthodox little Church. Russian Orthodox church up on a hill. Beautiful structure, uh, amazing views. If you have a chance, uh, walk out that way too. So I definitely would stay at Deep Creek at least one or two nights. Yeah, a couple nights. Have a nice down. It's a great downtime to just relax and enjoy the scenery. Enjoy around what's around you. you. Uh, well, it's named Deep Creek. There is a creek that runs right along. Lots of eagles. Of oh, yeah. Great, <coughs> great opportunity to uh, photograph Actually, eagles there. I think there. that's where some of my best shots were from. Was there another, or another Anchor another. Point. Mm -hmm. Also down in Anchor Point, we're almost a homer. Another place, if you want to stay outside of the spit in uh, Homer proper, uh, is Anchor Point, um, Whiskey Point RV Park. Oh, Whiskey, Whiskey Beach. Point. Whiskey Beach. Whiskey Point is RV Whiskey Park. Point? Oh, yes. Okay, you have it right it's now. It's an actual from... business. Okay. We we met them uh, last year at the oh, show. Oh, oh, but there's a Whiskey Beach too, in that area. Somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is Whiskey it, Point. I think it's Whiskey Point, not okay. Whiskey Beach. Maybe. She's probably right. I mean, I mean, she does the research. Just saying. Whiskey Point. We haven't stayed there yet. We plan to. Hey, we're going to go to Homer now. We have to go to Homer. Homer's next. Yep. So, Homer, um, places to stay. So, I did oh. put a couple down. Numerous. If you want full hookups, I've got two recommendations for you. And that is... Uh, on the spit heritage RV mm -hmm. park, or if you want to be in town and maybe not, maybe be at a tsunami warning level. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. But be <laughs> above the tsunami. Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. Homer Bay, uh, Bayview KOA. Yep. And I say that because usually about once every summer, there's mm -hmm. a, a tsunami war warning and everyone on the spit has to evacuate and it, becomes quite a soup sandwich there there's that soup sandwich that, that ss term <laughs> yes yep, yep. um the, the koa um is up on the bluff amazing amazing views, views of the water of, of the and Ketchmack bay and the inlet the owners are amazing people they're great people yes uh but so that's our recommendations for full hookups in homer however if you want to boondock or dry camp there's the Mariners Park mm -hmm. right at the start of the spit. I call that the armpit. The armpit. The, the armpit spit. of the spit. It's great views though. It it's is. beachfront. Um, and then also, if fishing is your thing, the fishing, fishing hole, hole campground is great. Boondocking because you're right, you're right there. Right there on the hole. And mm -hmm. the hole is where the migrating salmon come in, and you can fish it. It's a easily. it's a artificial fishery or a, a a hatchery, artificial hatchery. Yes. Yeah. So we stayed there in August. We, we missed the fish. Two days late. We missed the fish by two days. It got yes. all fished out, but yep. we still had fun. Mm -hmm. um, things to do when <clears throat> in Homer. We visited <laughs> the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that is a really cool visitor center that basically introduces you to everything out in the Aleutians. Mm -hmm. Um, amazing World War II history in that museum. Um, it really 
opened our eyes to yes. yep. the Aleutian Islands and everything out that direction. Yeah, really neat, neat um, walk the harbor again. You can get down. Uh, some ducks. Most uh, of the I think ducks are gated. Aren't most they? of the ducks in Homer are gated. Yeah. But you can still you can still see the operations of the boat. You can get on both sides of the harbor, and you can see the small boat harbor and all that stuff going on. And they also have the big boat harbor where the big fishing boats come in, and you can see some of that happening too. And the nice thing with the Homer Harbor, everything is kind of built around it, and the boardwalks and stuff up top, very busy with lots yep. of cafes and uh, souvenir shops. There's no shortage of eateries and gifts. And None and whatsoever. It, there, there's an amazing selection. Um, um, now you have the Wind Nature Center. Is that the one up on the hill? Up on the hill. Yeah. Yes. That was a really neat area. In Sky View Drive, I believe. I think it is on Sky if View. If you work your towed vehicle, not RV. No RV. Take your towed up to Sky View Drive, and up there is the Wind Nature Center. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little. It, it's an old homestead that got donated and turned into a museum, and it really takes you back in time. Yep to i would say probably the 20s settling of the area settling of the area yeah. that, that's a good way to put it uh -huh. and there's a nice boardwalk nature walk up there just it felt like we were in a different world it, it, and very nice interpretive center on that yeah. nature walk and very plaques and signs and such uh, really nice nice setup and then uh Beach a day home. trip to seldovia yeah. is great from homer or from the spit here you can get on a ferry, a ferry and go over and spend the day in Sodovia, which is a neat little fishing village. It's mm -hmm. about an hour cruise. I think it's about a, yeah, about an hour up there. So yeah. another great opportunity to see wildlife on the water uh, with that ferry trip. Mm -hmm. And we did that for just one afternoon and went I over and had dinner and came back and it was great. Yeah. Now what's the other place? Halibut Cove. Cove is another place. It's uh, that draw is more of a restaurant setup, right? Yeah. Not much there, more than the than the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. But I, we have I'm another. A little, I'm I know. A, there's a reason. There's a reason why yeah. I don't push that restaurant anymore. There's actually a couple of reasons. Well, her pilot license was taken away. <laughs> yeah, there was an incident last year. <laughs> Not very good for being an ambassador of Alaska. No. I'll just say that. But Sildovia, I definitely have really pretty recommend. cool. And, and they have a lot of a, a good music scene in Sildovia, too. They have a music yes. festival yes, every year. Um, yep. So check that out. If music is mm -hmm. your thing, that might be something you want to go to. Um, also, eateries in Homer, I suggest Fat Olives. Oh, of course. Good stuff. Great pizza, mm -hmm. as well as other um, good dining good yep. opportunities it's not just pizza nope salty dog saloon take your cash take and cash have a beer and pin a dollar and pin a dollar to the ceiling yep um flagship creamery for some great ice cream oh oh fairy wine bear what's it what, what are they called up there uh, uh bear creek winery. bear creek winery so mm -hmm. alaska of course we we are not of a climate to grow grapes but they make wine out of fruit. Different fruits, yes. So very good. Good selection. Also, of course, if you go to Homer, you want to halibut. Halibut fish. fish. Um, uh, it's it, and it's, it's halibut they call capital. It halibut capital of the world. Um, and uh, there's halibut out there. That is for sure. You have a good time doing it. I took a charter last summer it with was, uh, with uh, Captain Mike. With Homer oh. Charter Fishing. Yep. It he was got a, really uh, fancy with his name there. Yep. It was Homer a Charter Kingfish. Fishing. King salmon and halibut charter, and I got one king salmon, one silver salmon, and two halibut. One of the biggest halibut he's ever seen on his boat, about 75 pounds. Okay, I'm going. And... It's pretty awesome. <laughs> we got through. We got through our notes. All everything. Now I'm going to go to your questions. questions. If you have any questions, put them up, up, up there now. We'll answer them. We have gone over. Well, we're at an hour right now, so... Rick. We'll be happy to hang with you for a few more minutes to answer those questions. I will be in the Kenai area towards the June end of June for a month or so with a 26-foot travel trailer. Question, do I need reservations or will I be okay? End of June. I like to be flexible, but I am nervous. End of June. Mid-July is when the fishing really starts to heavy, heavy. hit in the Kenai. And every year the run can be different. Yeah. It can be late. It can be early. 
I think the one thing that you have going for you is, is there's your mic small. Well, not only is he small, there's lots of RV parking, yeah. especially in that area. Um, Fred Meyer does have boondocking in their parking lot. I just remembered this. Well, there is, but they're going. There's a major reconstruction. They're going through a remodel, and so the boondocking will be limited in yeah. their parking lot. Mm -hmm. But for other campgrounds in the area or RV parks, I think you should be fine. You can always, once you get closer to that date, usually you can find some place within a day or two. Yeah. Just call ahead and say, hey, do you have a spot in two days? You'll you'll find someone. Yep. We've never hardly anywhere in Alaska not been able to find some place somewhere with a one or two day right. advance right. notice. And usually for us, it's the day up. Normally it's the day up. Like, oh, shoot, where are we going? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Um, but, you know, it is getting close to fishing time, uh, fishing runs and such like that. So <laughs> maybe watch the fish counts. And if the fish counts are starting to climb pretty high, that means people are going to start coming down there to get them. So be aware of that. Again, I think this is Sue. She says, Willow was my intro into camp hosting. Willow is great. It's got paved roads all the way around it and then you know, gravel dirt lots, but it's a really nice campground. Look at you were right. Bertha Campground and Granite Creek. See, I told you. A this is yep. Sue's area. She camp hosts in Hope usually oh, nice. nowadays. We originally met her at Tenderfoot. Um, and oh, that's Sue. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Madison says, hint, you can stay at the forest campgrounds for half the price with the senior national park pass. This is the man that if he makes a post on this page, you'd better read it. He's got an amazing amount of information that he loves to share with you all. We love Thank Madison. You, Madison. Tenderfoot heart. Yep. Yep. That's where it all great. started with us. Mm -hmm. Sue. Porcupine, which is in hope is U S forest service by reservation. Oh, it's rather mm -hmm. it's forest service, not state. Okay. And Madison single sites only. Uh, Linda says hi. Hi, Newport. Sue says love dirty skillets. Dirty skillet was where was dirty Again, skillet. Again, Sue agrees the flamingo's gone downhill. Yeah. Uh, sea otters often right out there. I don't. We sea otters outside of Mariners Campground, maybe. No, no. that was farther back. I think uh, maybe <laughs> when we were talking of obviously Seward. Oh, so you're going to yeah, see yeah. Oh, yeah. sea There's otters, sea otters out, out of Seward too when right. you're at the right. waterfront we've seen campgrounds. Them. Yeah, we watched them too. Um, uh -huh. And humpbacks have entertained us. Yes, they have. They have several times. Uh, George, he had to leave, but oh. have a great evening. Thanks, George. Uh, as Sue says, you're now entering our summer playground. So as you enter yes. the uh, Kenai, nobody has come back with the magic S. What is what is uh, on the volcanoes? Well, the volcanoes. we're not down there okay. yet. Okay, so waiting for that. Mm -hmm. So Madison was saying that the Russian River is closed, but Sue let them know that opens June first, and. Herb says that he's going to be campground host at Bing's Landing. Leanne says she loves Cooper Landing. My fellow YouTuber Lynn from Follow Alaska says hello. And Herb is bringing syrup. Good. A couple people saying hello to each other. Okay, let's find questions. Uh, again, in Sodotna, John Feeney is agreeing with Echo Lake Meats in Sodotna, excellent place to pick up meat. Finding a good place to grab meat is, um, it's hard to find up here, so that's good to know. Here in the valley, we go to the three bears. It's just kind of funny how that works. Mm -hmm. uh, Sue also gives Kelly Peterson's Lakes free campground parking uh, parking lot style and refuge off Sterling Highway. Oh, okay. Uh, no comments. There we go. Madison's replying to Rick. If you're concerned about going first come, 
then just go for a reservation. I've had a problem finding a place for the night, but I'm all, he's never had a problem, but he's also in a B. Yeah. It's pretty easy. You can usually find some place. Yeah, but if, it, if you take the stress away, just make the reservation if you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick says, can I get a reservation a few days out or do I need to book far in advance on the Kenai? I think we already- A few days out is probably probably good. We we replied to that. But if you want to if you want to eliminate the stress, then make that reservation earlier if you need to. Friday and Sunday afternoons are very heavy traffic times to the Kenai Peninsula. Yes. Yes, so you got to remember that the Seward and Sterling highways, both of these highways are all single lane or two lane, one lane in each direction. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the playground for Alaska and the locals. They go down there to fish. So not only do you have tourist traffic, but you have local traffic, which really congests. Yep. If there's any sort of accident, it can close down the highway for so, hours. A long period of time. <clears throat> like we're talking six, seven hours. Uh, I know we had someone ask about, uh, they were wondering if they had a flight at like two in the afternoon to go pick someone up. Could they leave that morning? And that's really pushing it. Mm -hmm. Maybe not picking up, but dropping them off. Yeah, that's off, more yeah. important. Um, so just know you could get held up on the highways there if anything is right. going on there's also been some construction i think most of that's cleared up now they were they were nearing i think the end along the turn again along the I, turn again we but, haven't been down there for a bit so i'm not sure how that's going on right well now. we were there in august but well it's been a bit it's been a bit it's been a bit <laughs> but just know pack your patience yep uh Remember that summer is our road construction season. They can't do road construction in the winter, so you just have to work with it. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Mount Spur from my mother. Mount Spur. She Good must. Job, she went Mom. to Google and she, she, she Googled, Googled that. Yeah. <laughs> Only mount I could find on the map in that area. Oh, okay. okay. It must be a volcano, right? but I think that's it. That that does come to mind. Yep. And I have one person that had some, actually a couple of people on the Facebook group. So I'm oh. going to go there real quick. All righty. Real quick. 12. Okay, I'll calm. <laughs> <coughs> but we're going to use Homer as a home base for excursions to Katmai and Lake Clark. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations for outfitters air taxis to Lake Clark? Or can you recommend a Ring of Fire flight scene trip? I do have a recommendation. We went with Barefoot Tours LLC. They're out of Homer. They flew us into Lake Clark and we spent the day watching the bears. Well, we didn't go to the lake. We were on the, on the Cook. We went to the National Park. The National Park area and the Cook Inlet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they want to go into Lake Clark itself. Well, no, he says to Katmai and Lake Clark. I, I'm, I guess I'm assuming kind of thing to National okay, Park. Okay, bear viewing kind of stuff. Yep. Um, what I liked about Barefoot Tours is they only have five people, five passengers uh -huh. for their plane. They don't do double bookings in a day. So if you've got him booked, you've got him for that day. Yep. And he really lets you decide what you want to do. You get to dictate your tour. If you want to stick with those bears and watch them, you'll stay there or mm -hmm. he'll move you to another area. After our... Um, Bear viewing, he actually flew us up and over uh, Iliama. Like I said, we saw it venting. And so we got to get really close to the so volcano. Hot, hot there. And uh, so we kind of got that volcano tour from the air. So, you know, you can call and, and ask, hey, can I <laughs> get this extra little flight in? I'm sure they'll work out the fuel difference mm -hmm. and, and uh, it'll work out great for you. Yeah. There's other air services out of Anchorage as well. Probably. Instead of just um, Homer, pretty much anywhere in South, Central, or on the Kenai, you're going to be able to find a flight tour. That reminds me, Seward, Seward oh, Air yeah, Tours, of course. I meant to mention them. Yep. They were on our list. I think uh -huh. I was just trying to get through it. They're a great uh, taxi service as well as tours out of Seward. Yeah, um, we great, flew with them two tour. years ago and had an absolute blast. I mm -hmm. loved our flight. Yeah, it was, it was a 45 was... minute flight, but we got to see a lot, went up over the hardened ice field. Uh, so 
answered that one. And Donna Neva says this is their last Monday Night Live before they leave on the, leave their home base and meander their way to Alaska. Sounds we good. We can't wait it's to about see that you guys. Time, people are starting to leave, especially from the East Coast. Where are starting to make that tour? Where would you recommend to go see the whales or at least try? Is there a certain time of year that is a better chance to see the whales? We have reservations to Stony Creek RV Park at the beginning of July. There is a resident pod out of uh, Seward. Orca. Uh, Orca, yeah. Resident pod of Orcas out of Seward that uh, we have seen, well, I've seen them a couple of times in, um, in, our, uh, in, my, in our boat. In our boat out there. Um, pretty impressed to see. Actually, no, I have also seen uh, or um, humpbacks out there bubble doing a, a bubble net feeding uh, situation, literally a hundred feet off the boat. I think um, your best. So they're out there. Your best opportunity for whales, I would think, is Seward. Yep. And I highly recommend Kenai Fjords yep. tours. And again, remember we have that ten percent discount, three hundred and sixty-five days a year, on our website as well as the top of the featured section. Check that out. We do see routinely see whales in uh, Prince William Sound as well. Um, but I think, like she said, more opportunity with the tour because they kind of they go out there a little bit further and um, they have spotters spotting for them, so they can kind of yeah. pick them out from a distance. Well, and they're out there every day, yeah. and so they kind of know, they where, know the, where they're at. The whales are okay, and that's all the questions on the group page. Oh, okay. Let me just check the business page real quick. <laughs> None there. Ooh. And and. Summer can have a lot of cell data congestion. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, it's getting better. I feel it's getting better. Again, AT&T wins the, can, can you hear me now? If a cruise ship is in, that's usually the only time you may see yeah. heavy congestion. But I also feel with Starlink, uh, the cell phone congestion isn't as bad anymore because people are using data in a different way. Right. I think Starlink, we were just having the discussion yesterday, uh, this morning. Yeah. Coming it, it home. It really changed things a lot, yeah. Starlink has changed how the game up here. I it mean, has. it used to be you could Trying only, to light up a little bit more. We'll only get, we'll have uh, cell signal, you know, when you're in town. Mm -hmm. So in the Starlink, you can get it anywhere up here. Yeah. In fact, we're coming to you tonight live from Starlink. So thank you, Starlink. That and, is you know, our only source of internet right. these days. Right. And I think it's been working fine. Mm -hmm. We want to go to Pro and Next. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, the cabin that we saw. When we, oh, oh. You, you'll have a chance I, to see it. Um, if I remember. That, that's a special tour, though. It's, it's a, a special, special tour. tour through the National. No, not that so far. I don't know, but we couldn't because it's clearly marked property. property. Yeah. With barefoot, we could not go to that cabin, but we did see it. Yep, there are special tours available for that. I don't know where you go for that. Yeah, I don't. Um, Any other questions? Oh, I didn't put that up. For so, Miss Keith. Yeah, Janet. Yeah. Janet, I think you had a, another question. Oh, that was the question. Okay. From the website. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I recognize that name. <laughs> oh, different. It's on Silver Lake. Okay, not the same cabin then that I'm thinking. You'll have to talk to separate outfitters that, that do fly to the different lakes. I, I don't know if Barefoot flies to the lakes. I don't. I, don't I know, know he does fly to the coast uh, mm -hmm. for bear viewing. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. All right. Oh. So, uh, as always, we want to thank you for spending the last yeah. hour and 15 minutes with us. If you have more questions about anything that we talked about, you can always uh, do a private consultation with us. Mm -hmm. Learn more at rvingtoalaska.com, as well as you can pick up a lovely sticker. And use that search function on the, uh, on the, pay on the Facebook page. There's an amazing amount of resources available there yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, it, it works. So well, type in your your maybe not your question, but a couple of words that would highlight your, your uh, keywords. Keywords, and uh, it should should give you some information. And if you'd like to come camping with us in July, check out rv2akrally.com for more information on There's how you can join available. us at 
the 2024 rendezvous. All right. Oh, great. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. It has been a great night. I am so sorry that we uh, took a couple of weeks off. It's just, it's, it's been a it's been a good uh, a difficult for both of us a little bit a little bit but it's something i had to even, get done even getting all the equipment down here just for this simple yeah. at the dining room table was <laughs> quite a hassle yep. but um next live we are gonna talk about the um Valdez okay and uh wrangle saint elias area Perfect. And that's getting towards the exit then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I feel like there's one other I'm missing. We're doing off the roadway. I have to oh, look at my notes. You, there was something off the roadway, boondocking. No. We are one short. Mm -hmm. And then we had two for April. Anyway, we'll look at the notes. We'll figure it out. Put it in the group page. We'll come back to you in a couple of weeks. We'll do this again. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Have a good night. Night.